So our second solution procedure for this beam is to use superposition. And this is an indeterminate beam to the first degree. So we are going to use indeterminate superposition. And so our approach is to identify one of the external support forces as a redundant force. And by doing that, we are going to treat it as an unknown applied external load. So what we're going to do is modify the actual structure. And my modification is going to be to take away the roller. And so I end up with a simple cantilever beam. But I can't just throw away that roller force. I then need to add it in on a second structure. And this is going to be F3. So I've got the actual structure is equal to a structure one, which is a determinant structure with all the applied external loads on it. So the distributed load is present. And structure two is again the cantilevered beam. However, it has applied to it the external load that is supplied by the roller. Now by doing this, by again taking away the roller, what I've allowed to happen in the beam are deflections and more specifically right at that roller in the actual beam I know that V at 4 has to equal 0 and I would see here by drawing the deflected shape that clearly I am allowing a, def a, a transverse deflection to occur I'd have V1 and 4 is not equal to zero and in my structure two if i draw the deflected shape i see also here i have a deflection at four which again is not equal to zero and so to preserve my superposition that my actual beam has zero deflection i'm going to need to come up with what's called a compatibility equation and what that compatibility equation is going to relate structure one and structure two to my actual structure. And so if we look at that compatibility equation, right, it looks like V in the actual structure is going to equal V in structure one at four plus V in structure two at four. And the reason why I'm going to highlight again the fact that I'm dealing with four feet is because at four feet, I know the actual deflection in the beam. That has to equal zero. So what we need to do is now come up with some values for V1 at four and V2 at four. One. So popping up in front of your deflection tables, we would recognize that structure one looks very similar to this picture. And again, though, we were not interested in the deflection at the end, but what we were interested was a deflection somewhere in the middle of the beam. So more specifically for us, we're going to end up using the deflected curve or the elastic curve. And what we have is a beam that is six meters long, but we're going to be interested in finding the deflection at four meters. So we will end up using that equation with these values in it. The other one is a cantilevered beam, right? and the point load wasn't at the end of the beam, but what we can do is use this picture for structure two, and what we can do is use our max deflection, and what we're going to do is use L equals four meters, because in our beam we have two meters that go past that distribute uh, that point load but they just go along for the ride and afterwards it's just straight line deflection so what we're really interested in is the distance from the wall to the point load which for us is equal to four meters so back at our beam here we see our picture i know that uh, my compatibility equation is sitting right there so I'm going to bring the equations from the deflection tables to us. Right, there would be structure one, the elastic curve for structure one. 
we're going to use the values for L and X as specified. So I'm going to go ahead and plug those in. I'll do the math for you. And again, we know that that deflection is going to be down, which is defined as negative with our sign convention. We go ahead and look at structure two again, right, which is our cantilevered beam with a point load, right, F3. And so the equation we're going to use is PL cubed over 3EI. And again, we're going to use L equals 4 meters. The point load is F3. And we've got 3EI. So now our compatibility equation, right, which is sitting right there, can now be rewritten. That 0 is equal to... the deflection in structure 1 at 4, which we've calculated, plus the deflection in structure 2 at 4. And so very efficiently, we end up with an answer for F3. And so this is what we've now done with our free body diagram. Right? It happened a little bit more quickly than with the beam equation. Right? But however, we don't have an equation for the uh, elastic curve, which we had from the beam equation. So although we've uh, developed some solution efficiencies here, right, we actually have less information.